Today's notes are Lesson 3.4, the five-number summary box plots. The goal today is to calculate the five-number summary for a data set and create a box plot and to be able to interpret the results of these descriptive measures. So in this lesson, we will examine uh, percentiles. We will examine several descriptive measures based on percentiles. These descriptive measures, like the median, are resistant measures, and so not sensitive to the influence of a few extreme observations. So the definition of quartiles, the most commonly used percentile other than the median, which are the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles and divide a data set into quarters, four equal parts. We use special notation Q sub 1 for first quartile, Q sub 2 for the second quartile, and Q sub 3 for the third quartile. Notice the different ways of displaying the data. We have uniform data where all of the quartiles are even. We have bell-shaped data where you have uh, more values um, in the middle of your data set and then it's symmetric about that median with the number of points um, that would align with the different uh, values on the x-axis. And then right skewed is where you have most of your data on the left and then you have some um, outliers or some just a few values that might pull uh, the tail of the data out to the right. And then similarly, similarly with left skewed data, you have most of your observations on the right and then just an extreme on the left. Steps to finding quartiles. So the first step, similar to finding the median, you would arrange the data in increasing order. Step two, determine the potential, um, sorry, determine the uh, median of the entire data. Third, divide the data into two halves. If the number of observations is odd, you would include the median in both halves. It's kind of a key thing to keep in mind whenever you have an odd number of observations. Find the median of the bottom half of the data set, which would be Q sub 1 or quartile 1, and find the median of the top half of the data, which would be Q sub 3 or the third quartile, and then lastly summarize the results. So we'll take a look at an example. We have weekly TV viewing times. The AC Nielsen Company publishes information on the TV viewing habits of Americans in the Nielsen Report on television. A sample of 20 people listed to the right yielded the weekly viewing times in hours displayed in Table 3.13. Determine and interpret the quartiles for these data. So the first step is to list out the data in order. So we have lowest number here is five and then fifteen and then sixteen and then we have twenty and twenty one twenty one and twenty and then twenty five twenty six twenty seven thirty and mm -mm. 30 and 30 and then 31 32 32 followed by 34 35 38, 38, 41, 43, and 66. Ooh, squeezing it in. 41, 43, and 66. And now we find the middle. So the middle, we kind of count down and we find the middle is actually right here between 30 and 31. So we have to, we have an even number, we know this. So we're going to have to average those two, which is 30.5, which is 
quartile 2, q sub 2. Then to find the first quartile, we find our middle of our lower set of our data. So that's right between 21 and 25, which is going to be 23, q sub 1. And then the middle of our upper half of our data, right here between 35 and 38, q sub 3. And that's going to be 36.5. 36.5 is our third quartile. We have another example, cyclone wind speeds. So from tropical cyclone reports published by the National Hurricane Center, we obtained the data uh, shown in table 3.14 on maximum wind speeds in miles per hour for one year's tropical cyclones in the Atlantic Basin. Determine and interpret the quartiles for these data. So we'll write down our numbers in order here. I've done that in advance, so I'm just going to write those out. 40, 45, 45, 50, 50, 60, mm. 60, 60, 65, 70, 80, 80, 85, 19 values, so this is an odd number, so we find our middle, which happens to be right here, 80. So this is our second quartile, Q sub 2, and we actually include that when we're finding the lower half, our first quartile, which is going to be right here between 50 and 60, halfway between 50 and 60, add them up, divide by 2, we get 55 for our first quartile, Q sub 1. And then this, similarly for the upper half, we use that 80 when we find the middle, which is halfway between 90 and 100 here, which is 95. Add them up, divide by 2. You can do that in your head. Q sub 3. And on to the back. We have a few more terms, and ultimately uh, we will be constructing a box and whisker diagram. So interquartile range is the difference between the first and third quartiles. So for example, in the weekly TV viewing times, to find the IQR for TV viewing time data uh, in the example one, recall that Q sub 1 is 23 and Q sub 3 is 36.5 and so the IQR would be Q sub 3 minus Q sub 1 or 36.5 minus 23 which is 13.5 hours. So that will be my interquartile range. The five number summary includes the minimum value, all three quartiles, and the maximum value of a data set. So find and interpret the five number summary for our TV viewing times. So that would be our minimum here is 5. The maximum, looking at that data from the front, the maximum is 66. And our quartiles, Q sub 1 is 23, Q sub 2 is 30.5, and Q sub 3 is 36.5. So you could actually just say that the um, five number sum 
five number summary for our uh, TV viewing times would be 5, 66, I'm sorry, we would list them in order, 5, 23, 30.5, 36.5, and 66. So you can notice that there is less variation in the middle of the two quarters of the TV viewing times than in the first and fourth quarters. And the fourth quarter, right here, between these two, so when we're talking about quarters, we're talking about in between any of these two numbers. The fourth quarter has the most variation. We'll see that more visually when we make the uh, box and whisker diagram. So our next term is outliers observations that fall well outside of the overall pattern of the data. You want to pay attention to these. These could indicate maybe a mistake in collecting the data or they could indicate just extreme values that are a part of the data such as uh, average American incomes and then including Bill Gates would be an outlier. So uh, the lower limit would be the first quartile minus 1.5 times the IQR. So that is 23 minus 1.5 times 13.5, the IQR that we just calculated above. And we get 2.75 hours. For the upper limit, we would do 36.5 plus 1.5 times 13.5 which is 56.75 hours. So example 5a says obtain the lower and upper limits of the TV viewing times and then determine potential outliers. So part A, the lower limit, the same as the minimum would be 5, the upper limit is 66. Part B, we notice that 66 is beyond our upper limit of 56.75, so there is an outlier. Which is 66. And it, it's a potential outlier. Like I said, it might be due to a mistake. Box plots or box and whisker diagrams are based on the five number summary and can be used to provide a graphical display of the center and variation of a data set. Adjacent values, this is important, the most extreme observations that still lie within the lower and upper limits. So that means we need to correct this. The upper limit is 56. 75. We do not have, we can't include 66. That's what makes that an out, outlier here. And that would mean this number should actually be 2.75. So basically should just be repeating these values here for the lower and upper limit. So adjacent values, the most extreme observations that still lie within the lower and upper limits. The most extreme observations that are not potential outliers. So we'll make this box and whisker plot. First determine the quartiles. We've done this. The quartiles are listed above. Determine the potential outliers and the adjacent values. Draw a horizontal axis on which the numbers obtained in steps one and two are located. Above, these, above this axis, mark the quartiles and adjacent values with lines. And then plot each potential outlier with an asterisk. Note, in a box plot, the two lines emanating from the box are called the whiskers. 
So we're going to draw the number line 0 to 70 for our particular data set, and then we'll label those 10. Then we'll plot our uh, three quartiles with lines. So 23 be about here. 36.5, let's see, halfway, a little beyond halfway. And then our median was 30.5. And then we plot our lower and upper limits or our adjacent values. So 5 was our lower, lowest value, and that's within our upper, our lower limit. And then 43, looking at our data set, is the adjacent value, the highest value that's within the upper limit. And then we make our box. and our whiskers, and then we plot 66 out here with an asterisk. So here is our box and whisker plot, which helps give us a visual interpretation of our five-number summary.